This video has been kindly sponsored by Moto CNC. Hello everyone, welcome to the channel. Uh, in this video, um, I am going to be fitting a set of adjustable foot pegs to my, uh, my R1. Now this is my track R1, um, so uh, adjustable foot pegs may come in very, very handy. Um, these have very kindly been sent to me by Moto CNC. Um, they will be sponsoring this video. And what we're gonna do is, um, before we begin, is we're gonna open up the box and see what's inside. So stick along and uh, thanks for stopping by. Right then, let's open up the box inside. The obligatory sticker, always get a sticker with uh, with new parts and uh, everybody loves a sticker. All right, let's move some of the packaging. Okay, so what we've got here is obviously some uh, very, very attractive machined uh, replacement foot pegs. And obviously they will simply slot in to replace the factory originals and they are 100% adjustable. Um, I think uh, I think the website actually says that um, there's 16 different positions that you can have them in. Um, and uh, yeah, they, uh, obviously you can have them higher, lower, forward, backwards, um, 10 o'clock, two o'clock, four o'clock, eight o'clock, wherever you want really. It's, um, they're, uh, they're really, really nicely made and um, yeah, they're, uh, they're, they feel absolutely, you know, they, they feel solid, they feel well engineered and uh, Moto CNC is a British company, so these are all made in Britain, which is nice. Um, anyway, so that's, uh, that's the foot peg itself. Now, what they've also sent me is they've sent me a different um, foot rest option. So as you can see, there is a chamfer on this one. This is like a track version, I suppose you could call it. And this is a completely round version. Um, so yeah, you, uh, you make your choice on the website. Now I will stress that when you buy this, you don't get both sets. They've obviously sent me both um, in order for me to make this video and to be able to demonstrate them. The, uh, you, you make the option using the dropdowns on the website. I'll, uh, I'll put a little uh, um, image up now so you can see what I'm talking about. Uh, yeah, so you can either choose the, the fully round ones or the chamfered version, the track effect uh, or race, I think they actually call it on the website. Okay, right, what I need to do is obviously fit them to my bike and then we can have a look at how they look. Now, one thing I do want to talk about that is unique to the, uh, unique to the, the R1 in particular is the pivot pin for the, the factory um, peg is actually not uh, immediately removable. If you look just here, you can see the end is actually peened over. So in order to remove that, we have to basically destroy it. So what I need to do is grind the end off um, and then I can pull the pin. Now here is um, a couple of replacement pins because obviously I need one for each side. And as you can see, that is the part there that needs to be peened. So once it's fitted, you basically peen the end to retain it. And I also indulged in a couple of um, replacement springs and this washer goes underneath here and the, pe the pin is peened against the washer. So I've got all new ones of those and I thought I'd treat the, treat the old girl. And uh, yeah, so in order to get that off, what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna remove the entire footrest hanger from the bike. Um, and the easiest way to do that is to basically remove the master, the master cylinder for the rear brake off of the hanger, remove these two bolts. The, um, the lower portion of the master cylinder, the linkage here, there's a split pin here, which just needs pulling out and then that pin will come off and then this whole hanger will come off. It's dead easy. So what I'll do, um, I'll, I'll strip all of that off and then I'll bring you back in when we, uh, when we get to the bench so we can uh, look at fitting these pegs to this hanger. All right then, here we go. Here's the, uh, the whole footrest assembly removed from the bike. Um, what I'm gonna do, obviously this is the bit we need to get to. You can see here now, you can see the peening quite well. 
uh, this is the bit we need to get off and obviously this whole uh, assembly here through the um, through the brake lever um, which which is a little bit wobbly I'll, I will admit uh, might need to look at that in the, in the future anyway what this bolt here obviously holds it all together so what I'm going to do is I'm going to crack this bolt off I'll stick it in the vise because it will be tight. He said it wasn't actually anywhere near as tight as I was expecting it to be. There's the bolt. And there we go, there's the uh, the whole foot peg assembly. Now, yeah, as I was saying, that is quite loose. Uh, I might look on the uh, on the parts fiche and see if there is some sort of bushing that is supposed to be in there because it feels incredibly loose. Certainly a lot looser than it um, than it should be. Uh, but uh, anyway, that's, uh, that, that's for another time. I'm not interested in that right now. So what I need to do is I need to grind this off. So I'm gonna get my grinder out, give that a little grind off and then we'll be able to remove the pin and take the old foot peg off. So what I'll do, I'll get on with that and I'll bring it back in when, uh, when I've got the pin out. Okay, as you can see, I have ground it down to uh, basically to the level of the washer. Um, so now I should just be able to punch it out. There we go, there's the washer. And there is the pin. Take it out of the vise, and there we go. That is the whole assembly apart, and there is the head of the pin. You can see uh, where it where it's wasted, and that is the portion that we're going to pin over when we uh, when we come to putting it back together. What I'm going to do um, before we do that, obviously, is I'm going to give everything here a good clean up and re-grease because it's pretty uh, it's pretty disgusting, um, a bit dirty. So um, obviously, I don't actually need that bit anymore. So that's can uh, that can go to one side, but we do need this. So I'm going to give that a good clean up, um, and then what I'll do, uh, we'll uh, we'll look at getting the new peg mounted up. Right then. Giving it a good clean up, got rid of all the old uh, grease and grime. There's quite a bit of grit in there as well, so uh, I'm glad I've got all that out. Right, what I've got here, I've got the peg. I've removed the peg itself from this uh, from this little arm. Um, and after removing it from the actual bracket, you can see how its uh, positioning works. You literally just put it into the position that you want it to and there's absolutely no way that that is going to move at all absolutely solid so you can have it down if you need it lower if you're getting on a bit like myself um, and you need a little bit of um, uh, a little, little bit of a lower peg you can have it like that a bit more racy you can have it like that put coming backwards if you uh, want a bit more ground clearance then obviously you can have it like that and then that will just simply go in the orientation that it requires it's um, held in with a with a bolt just like so and you just put it in the dark in the, you know in the orientation you want and then just tighten the bolt a little bit of loctite on there as well won't go uh, won't go amiss so we'll probably uh, get to that in a moment so what i'm going to do first is i'm going to fit this to the bracket itself now my r1 this chamfer here points down towards the ground and obviously this this um, radius here needs to point upwards because that's how it works when it's um going against a spring that needs to be if you add it that way it'll lock and it won't um it won't actually be able to spring up so we want it that way around so what i'm going to do i'm going to open up the little bits and pieces that i've got here so i've got a brand new washer i've got the brand new pin and i've got a spring which doesn't want to come out the back. Come on, there you come, stop being a, stop being a swine. Uh, 
and there we go got a little bit of plastic on there get off right there we go there are the parts that we need in order to uh put this back together and what i've done actually as it goes i've left the old spring still in the old foot peg so you can see the orientation that it needs to go so it needs to go in like so dead easy obviously get it against the spring pressure Again, against the spring pressure. And there we are. And that is that. Perfect. The, the, uh, the difference between the brand new spring and the old spring is night and day. There's so much more tension in the brand new one. It's, it's weird. Um, and then that little washer just simply goes over the top of there. Right, what we need to do now is peeing that back over. Now, I just want to have a little quick discussion with this um, because this is a little uh, minor irritation with this particular bike that you won't experience with most bikes. For example, uh, the ZX9R and the Triumph behind me, they, um, they have little snap rings um, here that hold it all together. The VFR, the GSXR behind me, they all use um, split pins. The, the, the end of the pin has got a hole through it, there's a washer, and then a split pin goes through to hold it all together. So much easier, and you don't need to buy any new parts. So when, you, when you're buying these um, pegs, obviously, you, you kind of anticipate it being a, um, an, an easy replacement fit. Um, in the case of the R1, certainly the 4XV R1, and probably the 5JJ, um, it's not that simple. You do need to buy these parts because Yamaha made it so that these aren't removable and replaceable um, in the same way that uh, most bikes are. So bear that in mind. Uh, that said, what I would have liked um, for this particular application is perhaps Moto CNC to have included a pin with a slot in it that you could fit a snap ring to or maybe a pin with a hole that you can put a split pin through. That would be my only minor um, point, I guess. My only minor point with this particular kit for this particular application. As I said, you won't get that on other bikes, only on this one. So that being said, as I, you know, they probably could have included a pin. The cost difference would have probably been very minimal, even if they had to then sell it at a slightly elevated cost, because believe it or not, these pins here, um, the pin, which is that one, sorry. Yeah, these pins here are, I think it was like four pounds, four quid for that. You know what I mean? They probably could have upped the price of these slightly and included a, uh, a replacement pin. Anyway, I've labored that point uh, enough, let's move on. So what we're gonna do is we are going to peen this over. So um, let's get on with it. Okay. Moving on, what we need to do is we need to flare the end of this uh, pin out to, to uh, obviously retain it. Now, what I want to do, I don't really want to uh, mar up this, the, the head of this brand new pin. So I've got a little chunk of wood, um, which I had lying around. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to sit it on there and um, we're going to give it a good thumping. Now, I've got a selection of drifts and punches and um, all I'm going to do, oop, all I'm going to do is basically flare it out so let's get on with it and give it a good good whacking and see how see how it goes all right unfortunately what it was doing there actually was making an imprint in the wood so I think I need to put it against something a little bit more sturdy. But I think what I'll do, I can use that to perhaps soften the blow so it doesn't actually scratch it up. Right, we are starting to flare it, as you can see. It's just starting to starting to flare but not enough to retain the uh 
the washer as yet, so I'm going to keep going. There we go, we're starting to go now. Yeah, again, we're still not retaining the washer. Right, what I'll do, I'll keep going, and when I get there, when I get it done, I'll bring you back. Okay, I have peened it over, and I'll be honest with you, I am not happy with that at all. Um, I'm going to need to do that again. So, um, as you can see, it's actually cracked. I don't actually know what uh, what tool Yamaha I use um, in order to uh, in order to display that, but I'm not happy with that. So I will be doing it again. Um, obviously, I've only got two pins, so I will need to get another one. Anyway, moving on. Um, it'll do for now uh, until such time as I replace it. Anyway. As you can see, it's completely retained um, for the moment and works just as uh, just as intended. So what we can do now is obviously put the uh, put the the whole peg assembly back together, um, and um, we can mount it on the bike. So I'll get this all put together, then we'll move over to the bike and we'll look at um, fitting the rest of the Moto CNC kit. Okay, we've got the. Uh, the foot hanger uh, assembly all all uh, back together again. Now what we need to do is I need to refit all of this back to the bike. Right, what I'm going to do, I'm just going to fit all these bolts in for now. Uh, I'm going to come back after, after the video and um, I'll lock tight them all then. Um, Let's just get it all together so you can see it. And there we go, right. That is going to go like that. Sides. Again, these ones I will also lock wire. Um, not lock wire, lock tight, should I say? Okay, there we go. Right, um, that pin for that linkage is there, and I'll fit that. Uh, I'll fit that later on because um, obviously I need a split pin, and I need to go and get one. Um, out of my box. So um, what I'm going to do now, I'm going to move on to the actual rest of the kit. Okay, we've got the assembly back on the bike and what we need to do now is obviously we need to fit this. So we can put it in whatever orientation we wish. Um, there's plenty to, uh, plenty to choose from. Um, I think what I might go with is that one. And it's simply a case of putting the bolt back in once we've got it where we want it to be. Um, if we can get the bolt started. Again, I've, I'll be using Loctite on all of this stuff um, when I come back around. And then fit in the peg just like so. And obviously, being mindful of the orientation of the peg, dependent upon what angle we put this at. Uh, 
and there we go as you can see that looks pretty nice now obviously this the the position of this will have an effect on um, how you react to the brake um, because obviously the peg is now further away from the brake than it was previously but again that'll just be a case of getting used to it but yeah we can we can have that in any orientation we want we can have it higher we can we can bring it forward we can bring it down any at all um and yeah as uh, as you can see it's a pretty well made bit of kit and here is the round one we could fit the round peg if we wanted to again it goes on exactly the same way the bolt just goes through the middle um and uh, yeah mounts it up so what i need to do now is um obviously i need to put the pin back in the uh back in the master cylinder and uh we need to um do the other side so i'll get the other side done and then we'll uh, we'll come back and uh, have a final thought so that's both done the uh, the pin on the second one actually splayed out um a darn sight better than uh than the uh, than the first one did uh, maybe you just needed a bit of practice for the first one in order to get it right the second time but um i'm gonna have to get another pin and replace that one because i'm not happy about it um anyway there we go there is the uh the job done and there it is with my feet on it and I can still access the brake um, and it feels it does feel quite um it's quite a, quite a nice comfortable position um the only way to uh tell really is to see what it's like on the track the only thing is obviously um with the adapter arm it does push the peg out um outwards probably about half an inch maybe three quarters of an inch um you don't really notice that under the foot anyway guys hopefully you uh like this video and um found it entertaining quite like the look of these um what i'd like you to do is bear in mind that they do these for a huge range of bikes uh, not just um the yamaha r1 they make them for uh, absolutely loads of models so um there's a link in the description uh of the of the video below so go and uh, go and check them out and um See if you can uh, see if you can find the ones for your bike. Um, I think the price point for them is pretty good, actually, uh, considering the uh, clear um, level of design that's gone into it, the uh, the workmanship and the quality of the materials. I think the price point for them is actually absolutely spot on. Anyway, guys, um, yeah, go and uh, go and check them out. Hope you like the video, and I will see you all again for the very next one. Take care. Bye-bye now.